Amen. Okay, I'm going to open up in prayer really quick. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you, Lord, for filling me up, Father God, to bring forth your word on today, Father, to give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, Father God. And we thank you, Father, for this opportunity, Father God, for bringing forth your word, Lord, to go over the airwaves, Father God, and to lift burdens, Father God, and to help us to get knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from your word on today. Lord, use me in a mighty way, Lord. Lift burdens from those here and those that are over the airwaves as well, Lord. We thank you, we love you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Today, the title is going to be Faith Under Pressure. Faith under pressure. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to try to go slow, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, so, you know, the uh, song that Praise and Worship was just now singing, you know, they were saying, praise him now because I believe it. Praise Amen. him now because you believe that miracle is coming to pass. Amen. And that's what we have to do, you know, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about today as well. Because sometimes we feel like life is pulling us in all kinds of different directions, and it's hard to have faith when you look at what's going on in your life and what's going on around us in those situations. But God is telling you today that it won't always be like that. Amen. Amen. God is telling you today that this problem or situation that you're in right now, it won't always be like this. Where you are right now, it's only temporary. Amen. 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 This problem will pass. Amen. 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 Or these terrible feelings that you're having, you know, of like being unworthy. We need to start turning that around and telling the devil, those are faults. That's, that's faults that you're telling me. I, that is not me. I'm not unworthy. And we need to start telling the enemy that because he is going to try to make you feel, especially when you're in those, in those times of like you feel defeated or you're looking at your situation. The enemy will use that against you. And make you feel like you're not worthy and that God's not going to bring you out of that or that God hasn't already brought you out of that. Because we mean everything to God. And he's already laid everything out for us and placed everything in place for us. Amen. And the enemy will try to knock you off that path. And so part of that is that including God in our decision making... And we need to stop making those quick decisions because sometimes when we're in those situations, it is about having faith under pressure. Amen. And when we're in those situations, it's uncomfortable. We don't want to be there. And we try to rush it and we try to get out of those situations. And we try to make quick decisions instead of stepping back and looking at the problem and looking at the situation and including God in those decision-making processes and asking him for guidance. Amen? Amen? So our main scripture is going to be, and this is where I'm going to try to go slow because we're going to break it down. Um, is James 1. We're going to start at James 1 and we're going to go to verse 2. Amen? James 1 and 2. I'm not going to try to get ahead of myself. I'm going to try to slow down. Because sometimes when we get up here, well, me, I'm going to talk about me. Sometimes when I get up here, I get so excited for, for what the Lord's given to me that it just makes me want to tell y'all really fast. And I don't want to rush it. Amen? Amen. <laughs> So we're going to read from the Amplified and the Message version. And I'm going to read James 1, 2 through 8. 
And then, and I'm going to read the Amplified first. And I just want y'all to listen to the words. Um, and then we're going to kind of break it down from there. I'm reading the Amplified first. Amen. And it says, Consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials. Be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. And let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom to guide him through a decision or circumstance, he is to ask of our benevolent God, who gives to everyone generously and without rebuke or blame, and it will be given to him. But he must ask for wisdom in faith without doubting. God's willingness to help for the one who doubts is like a billowing surge of the sea that is blown about and tossed by the wind. For such a person ought not to think or expect that he will receive anything at all from the Lord. Being a double-minded man, unstable and restless in all his ways, in everything he thinks, feels, or decides. And now we're going to go over to the message version. And the message version in mine, the title up above it says Faith Under Pressure. And it reads, Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed not deficient in any way. If you don't know what you're doing, pray to the Father. He loves to help. You'll get his help and won't be condescended to when, when you ask for it. Ask boldly, believingly, without a second thought. People who worry their prayers are like wind whip waves. Don't think you're going to get anything from the Master that way, adrift at sea, keeping all of your options open. Amen? Amen. Did y'all follow along? Amen. 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 So faith under pressure. It's hard to have faith when we are under pressure. All of us have experienced that. You know, when we try to, like it says in the message version, you know, we try to do things prematurely. We try to make it happen too fast. And sometimes we mess it up in the process of doing that. We just have to keep our faith through it all. Amen? Amen? Keep believing through it. You know, it's just like, um, I know for me when I was in the military and we would have to run, my chest would start hurting so bad and I would just want to give up. I'm like, my chest is hurting. My is hurting. I don't want to do this no more. But then your endurance grows further, and you're able to get through it a little bit more each time you keep doing it, each single time you keep going. And that's how we are when we go through things. When we depend on God more and we focus on Him more, that next struggle or trial gets easier and easier. And that's why it's important to include God when we're going through those things. Amen. And it's just like our faith, you know. When you're going through, that faith gets stronger. The next time you go through something, well, I made it through that, so I know I can make it through this. Amen. And then as you're going through those things, what are you doing while you're going through those things? Um, are you dwelling on the problem? Are you worrying about the problem? Or are you giving it to God? Amen. So we're going to break these scriptures down a little bit. Um, verse 2 in um, the Amplified says, Consider it nothing but joy when you fall into various trials. Now, I don't know about y'all, but having joy in a trial is hard. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know about y'all. Um, it's hard to be happy when those trials come. But just like they were saying in that song that the choir sang a little while ago, praise Him Amen. no matter what. Amen. Praise Him during those times. Amen. 
because you know without a shadow of a doubt that he's worked that out for you already. We need to think of it from another perspective because we're always looking at it from our perspective. And I'm going to use this water bottle as an example. If I set it right here, everybody in the congregation, even over the airwaves, is sitting at a different place here in the church. And each person sees a different view of this water bottle. So everybody has a different perspective of what this water bottle looks like. That's right. Because they're sitting in a different place. Okay. Well, just like us, we try to go to the world for advice. We try to go to the world to um, fix our problem when they don't have the same perspective as God. And just like everybody out here, we're human, human nature. We all have a different perspective of what this water bottle looks like and what it says. Because my side may not say what your side says. But God sees the whole picture. God's perspective sees everything that you're going through, your whole life. He's worried about your whole well-being. When you come to somebody with a problem, they're only seeing this perspective or this perspective. They only have their opinion of what they're seeing. But God sees the future. God sees the whole picture. Right. And that's why it's important we go to God for our problems instead of the world. Right. Because the world only sees their perspective. Amen. God's view and his outlook and his perspective is way different than ours. He is in the spiritual realm. And that's where, and, and once we've accepted Christ, that's where we're at. We need to stop looking at it with our worldly eyes, with the physical eye, and look at it in our spiritual eye. Well, what does the Lord say about my situation? Mm -hmm. Who does the Lord, who does God say I am? What are the benefits that God said I'm entitled to? Amen? Amen. Amen. God sees your situation. God sees your problem. And he has already provided in that situation. Amen? Amen. So in verse 3, it talks about, in the Amplified Version, it talks about your faith life is forced into the open and it shows its true colors. Let me tell you, that's when our true colors really come out is when our faith is tested. That's your true self who comes out when your faith is tested. Are you really depending on God or are you depending on the world to take care of your problem? Are you depending on yourself to take care of this problem? Are you relying on yourself to fix this issue? That's when your faith life really is forced into the light. And you really see who you truly are in your faith life. Amen? Yeah. I don't know. Y'all are really quiet. I always say that. I know. But I think I need to take my glasses off so I can see what y'all's faces look like. <laughs> amen. Amen. So your faith life, that's when you truly find out how strong you are. That's when you truly find out, am I going to believe in the storm or am I going to believe in my provider? Amen. Amen? Amen. Am I going to believe that I'm defeated or am I going to believe that my provider's already made a way out for me? Amen. Come on now. Amen. The Amplified calls it spiritual maturity, mm -hmm. leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. Spiritual maturity. How do we get spiritual maturity? By learning of His Word, mm -hmm. by being in this place, mm -hmm. Amen. by hearing the Word, by applying the Word. Amen. Spiritual maturity. That is how we grow spiritually. Going through something and we get stronger and stronger. 
The Bible doesn't say that you're not ever going to go through anything. That's right. That's true. The Bible doesn't say that it's always going to be easy and that it's always going to be this perfect picture. It doesn't all. It doesn't say that. I'm sorry, but if y'all thought that, that's the wrong answer. <laughs> but we are going to go through things. We are going to have problems. It is going to be a fight. But when we get stronger, it's just like when I was talking about running and my chest hurting. As we get stronger, it's not as uncomfortable anymore. As we have more faith, it becomes easier. Amen. And we believe more. Amen. 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 Because God got me through that small thing. I know he can get me through this big thing. Amen. 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 As we're going through, we need to ask God for that wisdom. And it talks about that in these scriptures as well. And in verse 4, it talks about, I think it's verse 4. Yeah. And let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work. The Amplified calls it getting out of anything prematurely. Because sometimes we try to fix it ourselves. We try to do it ourselves instead of waiting on God. And what he has for us. Right. Trusting what God has already put into place. Mm -hmm. You know, we try to cut corners and try to do it our own way. Yeah. You know, we in Sunday school this morning, we talked about Noah and the ark. It was a fabulous Sunday school for those of y'all that missed it. Y'all are missing out. Um, but if Noah would have cut corners and built in the ark, it would have sunk. But God gave him specific instructions on what to do. And sometimes God gives us specific instructions that we don't want to hear it because it's too hard. Or we got to go talk to somebody that we're mad at. Or we got to work with somebody that we really don't like. <laughs> or that one coworker that just drives us nuts. We need to just get over ourselves. Because God's trying to move you, but your faith is still that little bitty mustard seed. And he's trying to get you to another level, and he's trying to get you to be bolder right. and stronger. That's right. But sometimes we complain too much. Or sometimes the timing isn't right, and 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 we don't like it. Say that. Say that. We have to trust what God's already put into place for us, and trust the course, trust the path. Amen. Like we said in in Sunday school, trust the process. Sometimes you try to figure out the process. Quit trying to figure it out. That's right. Mm -hmm. Quit trying to figure it out. You know, if I, if, if I, if somebody would have told me 20 years ago that I would have the things I have now in my life, I would have told them they're lying. Because I know and I can see, as I look back over my life, how God has blessed us. Amen. And how God has blessed my family. Amen. And what God has done in my family. And I know, without a second thought, that he is blessing me. And that's what you have to look at. You have to think about, you know, it may not look the way I want it to right now, but it's coming. Amen. It's coming. Amen. It's going to be here. Amen. Amen. It's going to be here. So in verse 5, let's move to verse 5. 
And I think this is the one in the message. It says, ask boldly, believingly, without a second thought. You know, sometimes when we're praying, and then it says people who worry their prayers. You know, sometimes, and this is kind of verse 5 and 6 because of how the message version goes, but boldly, believingly, without a second thought. Don't second guess what God's plan for you. You know, sometimes we say to ourselves, sometimes when we're doing something, we say to ourselves, I should have went with my first mind. I should have went with my first thought because I just messed this up. And that's what you need to do. Sometimes we, we, we overthink it. We try to think about it too much. And that's when we mess it up. Yep. And it says, ask for wisdom in faith without doubting. I know it's hard to doubt. I know. I know it's hard to not doubt. I know. Because we are looking at the physical situation. But that's where we need to look at the spiritual realm. This isn't hard for God. Amen. It's hard for us. Yes, but it's not hard for God. He's already laid out the path for us. He's already laid out the benefits and the blessings for us. Amen? Amen. When we doubt, it's like this wind-whipped waves that it's talking about. When we doubt, that's what it's like. When you doubt, it says you're like the billowing surge of the sea that is blown about and tossed. And that's why it says we worry our prayers because, you know, when you're praying, we should be speaking God's word. And God's word is not about worry. Amen. It's about believing. It's about trusting. And yeah, sometimes, you know, we we tend to say, well, Lord, this is what it's looking like. <laughs> it's not looking too good right now. But we need to stop doing that. We need to say, Lord, I know you are doing this in my life. Lord, I know this will come to pass. Yeah. I know you have not left me or forsaken me. I know this is coming to pass. Amen? Amen. Amen. Which means, you know, when we pray, we just have to believe. Have faith in what you know God has already worked out. And I I don't know about y'all, but I've seen some pretty crazy waves in the sea. But from, from someone that's been on a small fishing boat at one time in her life, Those waves are unpredictable. Very crazy, right? All over the place sometimes. And that's how we are sometimes too. When we're in our feelings. When we're in our emotions. When we're focusing on the situation. Unstable. When we should be trusting in Him. Amen? But I don't know about y'all, but I want to be stable. I want to be stable in Christ. Amen. Amen. Knowing that I'm his child. Knowing that he saved me and I'm receiving all those benefits Mm -hmm. because I'm an heir of Christ. And since I'm talking about that, I just want to flip over. Y'all, stay in James, but let's flip over to Galatians really quick. Message. Um, Message, yes. Galatians 4 and 7. And I'm reading the message, sorry. 4 and 7. 
and 7. And it's about the last sentence because the message always bunches it up. The last sentence it says, And if you are a child, are you a child? Yes. You also, you're also an heir with complete access to the inheritance. Complete access. All right. You don't have half access. That's right. You don't only have access to part of the benefits, to some of the benefits, to a few of the benefits, all of the benefits. Amen. Complete access. Amen. Amen. Complete access. So that's what you need to tell yourself. When you're praying, when you're writing those things down, I'm an heir in Christ. Complete access. I have complete access. I know the enemy is trying to make it look like this. I know he's trying to put these obstacles in my way. But we fall for them sometimes. So let's go back over to James 1. And we're going to continue on with verse 7. James 1 and 7. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm still doing Amplified and Message. Yes, yes. So verse 7, when we read in the Amplified, it says, For such a person ought not to think or expect that he will receive anything at all from the Lord. And then in the um, message version, it says, Don't think you're going to get anything from the master that way, adrift at sea, keeping all your options open. That's part of verse 8 as well. But that's, that's how we get. Sometimes we get like being at sea tossed around because we're unpredictable at that point. Because we are so worried and so distraught because we think that things aren't going to come to pass for us. When the Lord is working it already out for you. Amen. We just need to have that faith. Amen. And being bold about it. That's right. Don't let anybody tell you that, oh, you know, your credit ain't all that great. I don't know about that. <laughs> and don't let nobody tell you, oh, well, you know, you don't have the education to get that promotion. Don't let anybody tell you that. Because you know what? The promotion comes from God. It don't come from people. Amen. It don't come from people. Because that boss may not like you too much, but guess what? When God's in the mix, say it. It'll come to pass no matter what. That's right. Amen. And let me tell you, when the first creditor says no, go to the next one. Amen. Because guess what? Somebody's going to take your money. Yeah. It took me and my husband like three or four before we got our house. Amen. I was like, somebody's going to say yes to this money. Because our money is just as good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So James 1 and 8. Being a double-minded man, unstable and restless in all his ways. And everything he thinks, feels, or decides. So when we have those double thoughts, like you're on the fence, second guessing everything, am I am I on the right path? Am I doing the right thing here? You know, all you're doing is being that double-minded, unstable, unpredictable. You're you're at at sea, lost pretty much. So that's why we need to stay grounded in God's word. You know, when we get like that. And all of us are human. All of us are human. And, you know, just like we say all the time, you know, when we're up here speaking, this message speaks to the speaker first. Amen. And, you know, I've been struggling with some things myself. And, you know, I had to really sit down. And when I was reading these scriptures, I was like, you know, Lord, I know you're talking to me first. Because, you know, people think it's all you know, butterflies and sunshine and rainbows being a first lady, but it's really not. You know, we struggle with things too. Um, and we have a life outside of church as well. Amen. You know, 
So things may not always be good or look good, but this was speaking to me first as well because, you know, I know the Lord is trying to show me some things too. And, you know, you get frustrated when you see the physical stuff, like this AC, you know, like this building that we've been trying to get out of for a while. And it gets frustrating, you know, and but that's why we need to quit looking at the physical and look at the spiritual. When we take care of this place, God's going to promote us to the next place. Amen. 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 And that's how you have to look at it. You know what? I need to take care of what God's given me right now and show that I'm a good steward over that. So I can move up to that next place. Amen. 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 Y'all are getting quiet now, but okay. Um, but don't get quiet because this is from God. This ain't, this ain't from Jennifer. Amen. So don't waver. You know, yeah, we'll fall short sometimes. We're going to feel unworthy sometimes. But that's when we've got to pick our head up because we're kings and queens. Amen. Amen. Because it's going to be okay. It may not look okay right now. It may not look good right now. You may not even feel all that great right now. But we just need to keep believing. Amen. Keep moving forward. Amen? Amen? Get up, dust yourself off, and talk to God. Communicate with Him. That's the main thing. Communicate with Him. You know, we can talk to God about anything. About things that you can't talk to people about. You can talk to God about those things. I know sometimes it's hard. We all waver because of this flesh. You know, and all we can see is the problem. And we do get weak sometimes. Sometimes it's hard for us to admit that we get weak in those times. But it happens. We just can't wallow in it and don't have a pity party. Amen. Amen. You know, we got to get up, get back on track. Get in his word and remind yourself of who you are and whose you are. Amen. 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 You know, it just like when it says when we talked about worry their prayers in the message version. When we pray about it, don't give it a second thought. Amen. When you pray about it, say, Lord, your word said in your word. Amen. And you know, I don't know about y'all, but I have a list of of things that I've been praying about and asking the Lord about. And when I pray, I say, you know, Lord, it's that number three on my list. You know which one that one is. You know. I, And in your mind, you may be trying to second guess yourself, but that's when you need to open your mouth and defeat the devil. Amen. And say, oh no, I'm not second guessing. I know what God's laid out for me. Amen? Amen. That's when, that's about boldly speaking. Boldly believing. Without a shadow of a doubt. Amen? Amen. And we need to tell the Lord, you know, I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it, Lord, because you're working this out. I have no worries because he was set up to worry for me. I wasn't set up to worry. Amen. 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 You know, I want to go back just a little bit to verse 3. And it talks about, um, I'm going to do the Amplify. It says, be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. Amen. Amen. Inner peace. Um, that inner peace we're going to jump really quick to John 14 and 27 John 14 and 27 and I'm going to read two versions of this I'm going to read the Amplify and I'm going to read the NLT Seven. 
Amplified and NLT. I'm going to read the Amplified first. And it says, Peace I leave with you. My perfect peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. Amen. And the NLT says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. So God has already given us the gift of peace. But we choose not to accept that gift. We choose to leave it behind. We choose to forget about it. But we need to accept that gift. Embrace that gift. Amen? Amen. Amen. I mean, it says, and it's not just any old perfect peace. It's his perfect peace. In the Amplified, it says, my perfect peace I give to you. God doesn't worry about nothing. Why should you? Stop wallowing in the problem. Amen? Amen. His perfect peace. Peace. And that's the kind of peace, you know, you got problems going on, but you're not letting it bother you. You're not letting it phase you. You're not letting it change your attitude. Because sometimes we got an attitude when we're going through something, right? We have to step into and walk in that peace, not allowing the situation to move you, not allowing the problem to overtake you. And not allowing the enemy to step all over you. Sometimes we give in too easy. And we need to tell ourselves, I'm the head and not the tail. That devil, he's under my feet. Amen? Amen. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer. And this may look like it may not be working out, but I'm going to have peace because I prayed about it, I gave it to God, and that's it. Amen? Amen? We talked a few weeks ago in, in the Bible study, I think it was, about waiting on God. And we talked about, like in restaurants, when you go to a restaurant and there's a server and they wait on you. Well, what are you doing while waiting on God? What are you doing while you are going through these problems? And when we talked about it last month, it really stuck with me. And I've been asking myself that question ever since we talked about it during that time. What am I doing while waiting? Am I worrying? Am I dwelling on the problem? Do I have an attitude because of my problem? And it really made me step back and look at myself and how I handle situations. And how I handle problems, really. So what are you doing while waiting? What are you doing while you're going through that storm? Are you continuing on that steady path that God's laid out for you? Or, like Peter in Matthew 14, where he walked out on water... And when he saw the waves, he started sinking. Is that you? As soon as as soon as you try to face the problem, you fold. Let's go there really quick, Matthew. Matthew 14. Um, I think it's 30. I think I'm going to read the NLT of this one. NLT version. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to go up to verse 28. It says, Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come walking on the water. And sometimes that's what we do. Lord, is this you telling me this? Is this really you telling me I need to wait? I need to step back? I need to not move forward? I need to stop making quick decisions and step back and look at the situation. 
verse 29, it says, Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? And that's how we are sometimes. We tend to focus on the problem, tend to look at the problem. And when you do that, yeah, it is going to take a while for that problem to go away because all you're doing is focusing on that. You need to shift your mind to something else. Amen. And that's why it's important to stay in God's Word. Amen. Don't focus on the problem. Focus on the problem solver. Amen. And who is that God? Amen. God is your problem solver. He's already fixed it. <clears throat> but we get impatient. And we try to rush things. Make things happen quicker. You know, and the key to it is is when you're going through something and you show God that you're not bothered by it, you're telling him that you believe in him without a shadow of a doubt. Amen. Amen. That you're not worried because it's already worked out. You're showing him that you're not wavering during those times. Amen. 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 Sometimes we allow our feelings or our situation to lead us instead of the Holy Spirit. And it goes back to what I said a little while ago when we said, I should have went with my first mind. should have went with my first choice. But we need to seek God in those situations. Amen? Amen. And what he says about your situation. So as I, as I get ready to close, I told y'all I wasn't going to be up here long because we got some things to do today. Communion is today. So as the deacons and ministers get ready to come up, I want to leave you all with this. God wants you to have all of your wants, all of your desires, all of your needs met. And he doesn't want you to struggle from day to day or hour to hour or month to month. Do we? Yeah, we do struggle because we're human. But we really need to take a look at ourselves and do that self-check. And look at ourselves and say, you know what? I need to do different. When I start second-guessing or when I waver, I need to get in this Word. I need to get in God's Word. I need to be built up. I need to get in Sunday school. I need to get in Bible study. I need to do better. Because, you know, when we have these problems and we start dwelling on them, we get into this rabbit hole of our feelings and sometimes it's hard to come out. And that's why it's important that instead of reacting to the storm, well, let me rephrase that. Because we should be reacting to the storm, but not the way you think. When the storm comes, we should be reacting as going to God first. Lord, what do you want me to do? Where should I go? What path do you want me to go on? But instead, we tend to panic. And we forget who we are. And we forget whose we are. And so, try to change how we think. Try to change what our first reaction is. Instead of worrying, what does God say about my situation? You know, and for me, sometimes, you know, we say it a lot. Sometimes we, you know, well, sometimes we don't like to come to Bible study either because it's at 7.30 at night. But let me tell you, when I leave here, I feel different. I feel changed. Yeah. When I come to church, I feel different. I feel changed when I leave. And that's the whole thing about it. It is when you get that word in you, you've got to, you've got to get that soul food in you. That's what this word is. It's food for your soul. 
And when you get it in you, that's what you revert to instead of worrying, guilt, trying to take the wrong route in life. Amen? Amen. So I hope that you all were as blessed as I was by this word on today. Amen. As I hand it over to my husband, I know we got communion as well. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give First Lady a hand. For a lot of ourselves to be used by the Lord to give us such a wonderful message. And I give the Lord a hand for me. Amen. Faith under pressure. You know, our faith grows under, under pressure. And it's just like being, you know, back in the day we used to have those, uh, Teapots where you put water in and it had a little hole in the, in the front. And so when you put it on there and the water got too hot and there was too much pressure in there, it'll start whistling. It starts whistling. And see, some of us, we have to understand about our faith. When our faith comes under pressure, we can't immediately be like the whistle. We can't be like, we just can't. Blow our top. Amen? For the sake, we can't blow our top. What we have to do is immediately take our minds back to, okay, how is God, what is God saying about the situation? What has God told me to do? How does this affect my life? How, and the bottom line is, there are always lessons to learn through the storm. Amen? Amen? There's always lessons to learn through the storm. There's always lessons to learn through pressure. But even though we go through things and we have that pressure, look, you can't give up. Amen. Amen. You can't give up. You can't quit. You can't make good decisions by getting angry and then immediately making a decision. No. You got to, you got to hold off. You, you can't be that whistle. Mm -mm. No, you got to hold off. Wait till that water comes down a little bit. And then you can deal with the water. You can handle the situation. But when, you, when it's already coming out the top, because you couldn't handle the pressure, you may get burnt. The other person may get burnt, and it's going to cause some trouble. Mm -hmm. So let's not get burnt. Let's learn how to go to, go to God first in everything we do. And instead of making decisions when we're hurt, making decisions when we get angry, making decisions when we are depressed, making decisions because we think we know it all. Listen, stop. 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 Quit trying to figure it out because God has already figured it out. God has gave you his peace. Whose peace? His peace. His peace. And what God's peace does not do is have uh, worry prayers. Amen. 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 Don't have worry prayers. Once God tells you about it, you stand on it and don't you move. Amen. You stick with it. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Don't make a, 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 a niche mail because you were too quick and you wanted to do it your way. And God said, hey, look, hold on. I mean, even in that, God has so much grace for them. And Ishmael, done, I mean, Isaac done great things. But he still had to suffer the consequences of his brother. And there's always consequences in our decisions. Amen? Amen. So make your decisions by first going to God. Amen. Amen. We love you here at Christian Freedom Ministries, and we thank God for you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, if you want to come out to Christian Freedom Ministries, hey, we have service on Sundays from uh, Sunday school starts at 945 to 1045, and then we have Sunday service starting at 11, and we usually out of here before 1, and then we have uh, Bible studies on Wednesdays at 730. We want you to know that we love you here at Christian Freedom Ministry, and we thank God for you. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, 
today is the time you get the meeting. So I ask everyone to please stand as we go to the prayer of salvation before we sign off. Everybody deserves a chance to give their life to Christ. If you give your life to Christ, don't look for big, you know, uh, um, um, you know, a lot of people think once you give your life to Jesus, all of a sudden God becomes a magician. And, you know, you rub the bottle and get three wishes every time. And it doesn't work that way. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will be different. It starts from the inside and it works its way out. You will be different. You may not see the difference at the time. You may not even feel the difference at the time. But I'm here to tell you, you are different. And I'm telling you, God loves you more than you can ever love yourself. He has always been there, and he's just been waiting for you. This is the perfect time. Amen? Amen. So I ask that you will pray with us. Father, Father I, open I open my heart, and I ask that Jesus will step in. And I ask that Jesus will step in. Take the remains of my life. Take the remains of my life. Make something of it. I surrender all to you right now. I surrender all to you right now. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. I confess in my mouth. That Jesus died. That Jesus died. And rose on the third day. And rose on the I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. I confess in my mouth. That Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for saving me. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, I want you to know that you are saved. Uh, tonight, Bible reading, Bible teaching, church is going to teach you about the grace of God and your relationship with Jesus Christ. We love you here at Christian Freedom Ministries. And remember this, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Stay free. Amen. 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 Amen.